The land explored by our ancestors extends from the Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition, Trails of Nomads, continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists led by Pilgrim of the 21st century, Sapari Skakov, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents How did the ancestors of the Kazakhs influence the development of shipbuilding in Korea? How did horses appear on Jeju Island? The similarity of stone ball balls of the land of the morning calm and the great steppe. Could this be a sign of kinship between the two nations? The participants of the exhibition Trails of Nomads intend to follow the route of their forefathers. In the Japanese port of Fukuoka, they took a ferry and went to South Korea's Busan. The path of 212 kilometers can now be easily overcome by modern vessels. The road will take no more than three hours. In the 13th century, the army of Kublai spent several months to cover this distance. More than seven centuries ago, our ancestors covered the sea route. It was 1281, the second campaign of Kublai Khan. However, it failed like the first in 1274. We have now left the port of Fukuoka and are heading to Busan. Our ancestors visited Busan. The first campaign of Kublai Khan to Japan began here, in this city, and the nearby ports of Masan. Korean craftsmen produced ships for the Mongolian fleet. In total, approximately 900 vessels were built. In the fall of 1274, the 40,000-strong army of conquerors set off. 15,000 experienced warriors came from Deshti Kipchak. They were considered the basis of the Mongol army. The rest were Chinese and Korean sailors and engineers. The members of the scientific expedition left Busan to follow the path of the Mongol army, led by our ancestors. Next stop is the largest island in South Korea, Jeju, where the country's smallest province is located. During the second campaign of Kublai Khan to Japan, part of the army was formed here. Then in 1281, the majority of the army was Koreans, approximately 25,000 soldiers, including 10,000 land soldiers and 15,000 sailors. The first campaign of 1274 was led by our ancestors, but during the second campaign, most of the Turks were left in China to suppress the rebellion that arose there. However, there were people from Deshti Kipchak, these are Kipchaks and Kanglis. If you look at the map, it becomes clear why the Turkic military leaders of the Mongolian army chose Jeju Island as the fortress. At that time, the Yuan Empire, which was created by Kublan, ruled over both Korea and part of China. Before the second campaign in 1276, the southern part of the Middle Kingdom was completely dependent on the Mongols. And this means that the grandson of Genghis Khan possessed a large shipbuilding resource. Both the Japanese and the Koreans who worked in the shipyards contributed a lot to the implementation of Kublai's grandiose plans. The geographical location of Jeju Island was very convenient for the conquerors. This is the intersection of the route from Korea and China to the Japanese archipelago. The Turkic military leaders, who calculated and thought it all out, were ready to deliver a crushing blow to Japan. 
And then, of course, only the typhoon saved that country. It was a very strong hurricane. The waves were huge. The strength of the typhoon was approximately nine points. It was called kamikaze. Until now, the Japanese say that it was a hurricane that helped them save and preserve the country. The power of Kublai's army was broken by a natural disaster which saved the Japanese. They could not afford to resist the formidable army. The empire, once created by Genghis Khan, was only called the Mongolian. Its entire structure was built on the Turkic principle. This is evidenced by historical documents. For example, the army was divided into the right and left wings, which consisted of two men. Each of them had 10,000 warriors. They, in turn, were divided into thousands, hundreds and tens. The whole control system was borrowed from the Turks. The main language of communication was Kipchak. The Mongol Empire of Yuan Empire were the official names of the state. Its founders were essentially the ancestors of modern Kazakhs. The powerful army of the state, which originated in the ancient Saka period, always returned with victory from campaigns. The Turks showed courage on the Korean peninsula as well. They first came here in 1231. The main reason then was the execution of the Mongolian ambassador sent by the emperor to the Korean ruler. In total, the history describes six invasions that have caused significant damage to the country. The last one was on Jeju Island. In 1273, the Mongol army attacked the island. Now we are at the very place where the battle took place. Many Koreans were captured. After a hundred years, the Yuan Empire fell and the prisoners returned home. Jeju Island is located below the Korean peninsula. Therefore, it is obvious that the struggle with the Mongol conquerors ended here. Now there is a tourist complex on the island where one can learn more about those distant events. It is located on the site where the decisive battle took place in 1273. The confrontation, which lasted about half a century, began with the refusal of Koreans to pay taxes to the Mongols. In 1216, the Hitan invaded the Korean peninsula. The country's ruler, Che Chong Heng, asked for help from Genghis Khan. Thus, the Khitans were sent off from the peninsula. To compensate for the service, Koreans had to pay tax to the Mongols. However, this did not last long, which served as a pretext for war. Most of the Korean army after the defeat and the battle with the Mongols fled to this island. Behind me is a fortress built by them. In 1273, the Mongols came here too. A new battle took place here. The Korean army consisted of only 12,000 soldiers. They did not resist the Mongols for long. Thanks to the built fortress, the Koreans managed to hold out for some time. Steppe warriors conquered Korea and for almost a century the country was dependent on them. Without exception, all residents paid tribute to the Yuan Empire. To control the Korean government, a special venture was set up, named the East Campaign Management. These facts are of great value to scholars studying history. Archaeological excavations are underway on the island of Jeju. This land keeps the great past of our ancestors, participants in the scientific expedition believe. <laughs> This is the fortress, or rather the part remaining from it. Now it has been turned into a large complex. There is a memorial plaque. This is a place of pilgrimage for tourists. Excavations continue here. The foundations of the structure are visible. 
This museum exhibits demonstrate respect for the history of the country. Here are paintings depicting the campaigns of the Mongolian army on the Korean peninsula and the Japanese archipelago. Images on them recreate almost the whole picture of those distant events. Many paintings are dedicated to the construction of ships. During Kublai's campaign in Japan, Jeju Island turned into a military base. Korean and Chinese masters produced various weapons and ships for the navy of the Yuan Empire. This whole industry has become the basis for the further development of the country in the future. In 1274, during the first campaign of the Mongolian army in Japan, the Koreans organized the production of ships here. Ships were launched on this island, especially many ships were made in the Pusan area. In 1274, the Mongols made a trip to Japan. Koreans and Chinese worked at the shipyards, they also served ships. The Mongols and Turks from Desh to Kipchak were also part of the army. The Kipchaks were very strong warriors. Koreans have a saying, people must be sent to Seoul and horses to Jeju. This island is famous for its horses. Tourists, including the Japanese, often come here to ride horses. In addition, this is a favorite place for those who appreciate horse meat and dishes from it. For example, sashimi, hue. These de delicacies are always in great demand. Previously, only representatives of the royal family ate horse meat here. Horses in Jeju has been uh, raised uh, before the 13th century. And in the 13th century, the Mongolians brought their horses from Mongolia and then raised horse in Jeju Island. They said Jeju is the perfect place to raise horses. So since then, uh, these actually the horses in Jeju are Mongolian horses. So the, the, the ancestors are Mongolian horses. So the government now in Jeju Island, they preserve the pure blood. Ancestors of the Kazakhs brought horses to Jeju. In 1273, after the capture of the island, Kublai Khan left approximately 3,000 of his soldiers here. It was they who began to develop horse breeding here. For more than seven centuries, these traditions have been kept here. The development of the industry continues to make its worthy contribution to the country's economy. Scientists at Konkuk University have repeatedly come to Kazakhstan to study the experience of horse breeders. Among those 3,000 warriors were representatives of different nations. About 10% were Mongols, more than 50% came from Dishta Kipchak. They developed their original craft on the island. According to local residents, there are now about 20,000 horses on Jeju. Across Korea, there are 40,000, and half of them are on this island. Another trail that ancestors left in Korea is stone sculptures. On Jeju Island, there are a lot of balbals. They are similar to those located in Kazakhstan, and this is the basis for the identification of all Turks. These are stone sculptures made by Koreans in the 12th, 13th and 14th centuries. In the north of Kazakhstan, there are a lot of such balbals. 
we have sculptures in their hands holding a bowl with kumis and here ball balls with flowers in their hands. This is the main difference. Otherwise, they are similar. This proves assumption that Turks and Koreans are kindred peoples. From Jeju Island, the participants of the scientific expedition Shells of Nomads went to the capital of Korea, Seoul. There, they visited the fortress, which witnessed one of the first invasions of the Mongols on the Korean peninsula, and met with local historians. Naman Sansong Fortress was the residence of the Kingdom of Korea. <laughs> We are in the Naman San Song. It is located 40 kilometers from Seoul. In 1231, this fortress during the invasion of Yugede Khan first resisted the conquerors. The total length of the fortress around the perimeter is nearly 7 kilometers. The height in some places reached 7 to 8 meters, somewhere it was 3 to 4 meters. At that time, Korea was weak in terms of political and economic development. Using this position, the Mongols conquered the country in a short time. The rulers obeyed the conquerors and carried out all their instructions. The Mongols' campaign in 1231 was led by Sartai. It was difficult for Korean soldiers to confront the well-trained and battle-experienced Turks who formed the basis of the Mongolian army. The Korean ruler and his entourage were forced to flee the Kangwado Island. However, the conquerors overtook them there. So the Kingdom of Korea became part of the Mongol Empire. Turkic military leaders ruled the country from the Namhasang Song. The Mongol Empire made 17 raids on Korea. There were several major battles. All these events influenced the further development of our country. For example, until the 13th century, we did not have our own alphabet. We used Chinese characters. After the Mongol invasion, our own alphabet appeared. There were such positive moments. It seems that the kindred roots of our people also somehow influenced the course of events. Nearly century-long domination of the Mongols was the impetus for the development of Korea. The people felt the value of unity. Before the Mongol invasion, the entire territory of the country was divided into many kingdoms. They constantly quarreled among themselves. The situation changed during the period of Mongol domination. The Koreans have gathered around one common goal, gaining freedom. It was during this period that many great things were done in the country. This palace of Gyeongbokgung, built in the 14th century, is proof of this. All rulers who resided here brought many benefits to their people. For example, the ruler Sojong approved the national alphabet Hangul in 1446. This was an important historical event. The Mongol invasion has greatly affected the country. The system of government at that time was completely destroyed. A major blow was inflicted on the political, economic and social spheres of the country. In North Korea, then called Koryo, the first capital of the Kingdom of Korea was located in the place where the construction of the Kyeson plant is currently underway. It was later transferred to South Korea. Seoul University graduate student Dastan Akash is one of those who are interested in a common history of Kazakhs and Koreans. In his opinion, most scholars use Chinese manuscripts for their research. Dastan Akash believes that there are a lot of materials in the Korean archives to study. The relations between the Great Steppe and the land of the Morning Calm began back in the distant Saga period. However, we will talk more about this in our next episode.